Hello, it's Olli here again. I will continue my series of these short tutorials, where I show you the basic functions of the Boshard program. This time I will show you how to make camera animations inside the Boshard and how you can render them out as a video file. So let's get started. When you have managed to train the Gaussian spanning model in Boshard, I recommend that you save the project before you start making these camera animations. The Boshard have this default viewport camera. It is not animatable and it is basically used only for general viewing of the 3D space. To create a real camera animation, you need first to press this button which says create camera. This will create new camera in the same position where your default viewport camera is. And to activate this new camera, you need to change to its view by choosing it from this drop-down menu. And now when you are inside your new camera, we can start to animate it. It mostly happens with this timeline, which you can see here at the bottom. It works very logically, and if you have animated something before in other 3D applications, like for example in Blender, this timeline is very familiar, and the same principles works here as well. We only need to set keyframes after each change we make to the camera. But let's start by creating something very easy. I want my animation to be 400 frames long, so I write it in this field here at the end of the timeline. Then we need to mark the first keyframe, and it happens by pressing this record object keys button in here. A very small gray dot appears below the zero frame on the timeline and this is your first key mark. And next I'll move forward 200 frames by dragging this time cue into it. Then I make changes to my camera. I move forward a bit and rotate the view. Remember that you can also fly and control the camera using the WASD keys on your keyboard. When I find a suitable place and angle, I press the keyframe button again, and now I have very simple tween animation between images 0 and 200. Camera animation is easy to check by dragging the cue pointer between these keys. I make one more camera point for image 400. I'll move the cue pointer here, and then again I make a little changes for the camera position and the angle, and then I press again a new keyframe entry here. Okay, and now I have this very smooth and long three keyframe camera movement animated. If the model is not very heavy, you also should be able to watch the animation in real time by pressing this play button on the timeline. If we are not satisfied with the position of the keyframe or we want to modify it, we can go on to that frame and remove it by pressing this Remove Object Keys button here. This will remove the keyframe mark, and you can change the camera settings, but remember, as long as you don't set new keyframe, the changes will not be saved. And if you now, for example, move your cue point on the timeline, you will notice that the camera will jump to the settings of the previous keyframe. So it is important that you remember to press the keyframe mark every time you move the camera. Okay, so now that our camera animation is ready and we want to render it out as a video file, make sure your camera is selected in the hierarchy list. Then you will see the camera parameters below and the output settings can be found in here. Here you can change the frame per second value if you like. It is 30 frames per second by default. But here you will also notice that the bit rate is set 
very low readings by default. It is only 8000 kilobits per second. You should immediately increase this value a little bigger, let's say 22000 kilobits. Otherwise the video will be very grainy and pixelated and heavily compressed if you render it out with low KPS values. After that we can define the output path where the animation will be rendered. And when we name the file it is important to write the file extension. Is it going to be mp4 or mov? PostShot can make videos but also image sequences in JPEG and PNG or even EXR formats. By typing the file extension after your file name you decide in which format the camera animation will be rendered. I use the mp4 video format so I type .mp4 after the file name. And after the bath is set we can start the process by pressing this render button. This should happen relatively fast and the rendering shows up to your screen in real time speed. Since PostSat is currently still in its beta development state, I have noticed that there can be some challenges in video rendering. Sometimes specifying a folder path or starting the rendering may freeze the program. That's why it's important that you save the project often. There are still minor bugs in the program and at this point, at least on my computer, I have encountered some problems. But this is the basic principle of how you animate the camera and how you render videos out from the PostShot. I would also like to emphasize that PostShot works with After Effects, where you have even more opportunities to produce different animation and interesting camera movements. So I recommend you to check out my previous tutorial on this topic. I hope these tips were helpful and you managed to render great camera animations. If you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I will continue to make these videos. See you next time.